Hey guys, it's Air from Just My Typewriter, and you might notice, hold for thunder, you might notice that things look a little different. My lighting looks different, my background might look different, I'm wearing strange glasses, and that is all because I got a massive facial sunburn two days ago, and now my forehead has swelled up to be three sizes larger than normal, and I have some pretty killer suntan lines around where I was wearing my actual glasses. So today I thought the show has to go on, I have to make another Just My Typewriter video, and what better way to play with typewriters or typewriter technology than to sit back and relax and let the robots do it. So today we will be playing with AI to design my ideal typewriter. So I've seen quite a few AI videos or AI references in the typewriter community. Lucas of Typewriter Chicago actually made a really great video a couple months ago where he talked to an AI chatbot that told him how to use a typewriter. And I've seen quite a few posts on the typewriter Instagrams that show AI created imagery around typewriters. Specifically, Richard Polt of Typewriter Revolution has been posting quite a few of these on his Instagram, and I think they look really cool. So I am messing with OpenAI today. They are the creators of ChatGPT, and they're also the creators of the image generator Dolly or Dolly 2, which is a combination of Wally, which is one of my favorite Pixar films, and Salvador Dolly. And that is their image generation AI website. I also did a little bit of research into OpenAI and their sharing usage rights. I wanted to make sure that if I made this video, the big bad internet wasn't going to claim that it wasn't my content because it was made by an AI robot. And actually on OpenAI's website, they talk a little bit about the policies of using their open technology and also what comes along with sharing some of the content. So I looked into what kind of usage rights are behind the sharing of images created by AI, and actually I found this really interesting. So if you create an image using their AI technology, you have to credit it as belonging to you, and you have the right to remix it or reuse it or even upload it and sell it to make profit because you were the one who created the prompt to create the image within the software, which I think is kind of interesting. You're the person with the ideas and the computer is the one that puts them all together. So in the minds of the creators of this AI technology, you are the owner of the content. <laughs> there is a thunderstorm happening outside. Everything is happening all at once. So let's quit talking before I lose electricity and let's try playing around a little bit with some open AI. So I thought we could start by using some of the basics so we can dip our feet in a little bit and get used to using something like AI technology. So why don't we start with something simple? Let's go to the playground. And they allow you to find presets so you can answer questions, do Q and A's, you can summarize for a second grader, you could do text to command, um, you could look at explaining code or you could chat. Let's start by testing how it summarizes content. So what you do is you give it a prompt and it will respond to you with some sort of summarization. So they give us an example here of summarizing something for a student and this looks like it's about Jupiter and a planetary system. Let's change this into summarize for a second grade student typewriters. Typewriters are machines that allow people to type words on paper. They were popular in the past but are now we mostly use computers to type. I guess if I was a second grader, that would make sense. Eh, let's try something else. Friend chat, airport code extractor. These are all the different ways that you can use something like this. Let's try movie to emoji. So it looks like if I put in the name of a movie, it'll create emojis that relate to the movie. So it gives us Star Wars. Let's see what it does for that. Okay, let's try something like California typewriter. I don't even know what that is. Is that a pen? US, is that the Statue of Liberty? Let's try chatting with the enemy and open up a chat with the robot. Um, hello, how can I help you? Could you? Get it to stop raining. Sorry, I don't have the ability to control the weather. However, I can provide you some tips to stay dry. Would that be helpful? Yes. Avoid going out in the rain if possible. I mean, he's not wrong. Let's try something a little more 
complicated. Do you know what a typewriter is? Yes, I know what a typewriter is. It's a machine that's used to type text onto paper before the invention of computers and other modern technology. What kinds of typewriters are there? There are a few different types available. Manual typewriters are typically the most common type, but they're also electric and electronic. Each type has its own advantages and disadvantages. Where can I find a typewriter? You can check out vintage typewriter stores and antique shops. They often carry a selection of models. Are there any vintage typewriter stores in the US? Interesting, it gave me a list of typewriter stores. Let's see if these guys are even real. They have a website. The Bargain Basement, where? Why have I never heard of these guys? They're located in North Carolina, but the AI told me they're in Ohio. No, wait, here's one in Pennsylvania. Let's try that one. Um, I can't find the brotherly Lansdale. Well, it gave me a website. Hang on a second. The site can't be reached. See if there's a typo. <laughs> so the website they gave me is not a real website. This is interesting. Yesterday I was playing around with this and I was asking it about typewriter YouTubers and it gave me some names of creators that I couldn't find the channels for on YouTube or the individual names of the people it gave me for for running those YouTube channels on the Antique Typewriter Facebook group. I don't know if it's always super accurate. I had a student I was talking to this morning actually at an event and he said that he's been playing around with it to see if it'll do citations for a paper he was working on. And in the paper, it would give him citations for places that aren't even real locations on the internet of information. So I don't know if it's actually referencing a real place or not. Let's go to the image generator. So you can get into the image generator, which is Dolly, that is our version. And what you can do here is you can enter into the text box, just like a random prompt, and it'll give you a bunch of different images associated with that. You can also upload and edit an image through their AI technology, or you can hit surprise me and see what comes up. And let's just have them surprise me first. I love a good surprise. A cat submarine chimera digital, heck yes. Oh my God, it's so cute. Is that a cat in a submarine? I love it. Let's look at some variations. So this will take that one image that they gave me and create a bunch of different variations on that singular image. Okay, so here's the original. And here's <laughs> variation one. That one doesn't look as happy. Let's have, well, let's start simple. Let's just try typewriter. Okay. These look like typewriters or parts of a typewriter. All this, this one has like no lettering on the type slugs and the rows are, or the keys are out of order. This one actually kind of looks like my Royal 10 project. Let's see if we can maybe get something more specific. I mean, that was pretty specific, but let's see if we can get a Smith Corona typewriter from the 1950s in a pop art style. It's telling me here in the tip section to come up with like specific painting or art styles to help give it more direction when it's generating these images. Oh my God, it's so cool. <laughs> Check this out. Oh, that's so snazzy. I mean, it has a carriage arm on it and keys. What will it do with one of my own typewriters. Let's give it my console 1950s typewriter. So you can upload one of your own photos and it'll give you some variations on that using its AI technology. I played around with this a little bit yesterday just to see what would happen. And I kind of liked the look of the results. So let's see what it comes up with. These are kind of cool. They kind of take some other brands in there and almost mix it. So here's my original. This is my console typewriter, my mystery machine. And it's giving me some like very different kind of feelings to it. This one's a little bit more square, fewer rows of keys. Here's one that almost has like that streamliner top to it. Like I've definitely seen this little guy here across the top, but again, only three rows of keys. Let's see what happens. 
when we upload a Barbie typewriter, which already looks like it was spat out of an AI machine because the shape is just so strange. Oh my God, these are so cool. <gasps> okay, here's the original. Here's the first variation. Look, it's even got like stickers across the top of it. That's cool. That almost looks like a laptop. I love that. So this looks like it almost has like a normal computer keyboard on it or something you might have like on an IBM. What would it do if it had a picture of diamond? Ooh, maybe this is, maybe I don't wanna know. Oh, please don't do anything horrendous to my dog. <laughs> they don't, I mean, they edited her a little bit, but it doesn't really look like her. Like that doesn't look like her at all. That's just kind of weird. Um, what is it, Uncanny Valley, when something is just like slightly off? Yeah, she's definitely cuter as herself. Okay, let's go back to building my ideal typewriter. So when I think about all the typewriters I have in my collection and combining them into one Mega Franken typewriter, there are a few factors that I really, really like. So I really like Smith Corona keys. I like the way the key tops feel. I like the way they're designed. So let's start there, a typewriter with Smith Corona keys. I really like the innards of my Adler J3. I like how it operates. I think it's easy to understand. I also think it's designed really well. Royal Futura pop top. Blue with a Royal Futura cover. It's not gonna know what any of these things are. Okay, not what I asked for. That's okay, we're learning. I got part of Corona here, C-O-R, at the top, and it is a typewriter, like that's pretty obvious. Let's try again. Let's, let's do a blue typewriter, atomic shape. <laughs> that is like completely not what I thought it would give me. Interesting. Let's do 1950s typewriter with stained glass like my Royal 10. This almost looks like some of those like Facebook posts that you find of like people who spray paint a typewriter or like cover it in lipstick and try to sell it as art. Look at the keys on this, those are so cool. They almost look like they're little rocks or marbles. What if we did a schematic? Oh, that's kind of cool. What is it pointing to here? Maybe this is the ribbon vibrator is pointing to or side panels? Ooh, what if we combined a typewriter? Oh, no, no, no. A monkey using a, a cat using a typewriter. <laughs> it's almost the color of like a Hermes 3000. Is this one smoking a cigar while using a typewriter? <laughs> a typewriter being used as a car being driven by a goldfish. Wait, this one has wheels. <laughs> That's kind of cool. So this is kind of cool. I input this picture of my Smith Corona Corsair Deluxe, which is like my profile picture on all the social medias. And it recreated some interesting ones. Look, it even made a little coffee mug that looks like my mug, but different. And the typewriter doesn't look that bad. And they even changed like the hardwood floor underneath. See, this is much better at creating what I'm looking for. So there's the original, here's another one. So it changed out the bottom and it put in different leaves behind it. This one even added paper. I don't think the, the first one didn't have paper in it, right? No, this one added paper. That's kind of cool. Let's go back to the chat and see if it can help me design my perfect typewriter. Absolutely, let's start by deciding what type of typewriter you would like. Do you prefer a mechanical one or electronic? Let's go mechanical. Great choice. Now what features would you like your typewriter to have? Would you like a color display or a regular black and white display? Do they mean color of ink? Do you have any other specific requirements for your typewriter? Lightweight. <laughs> it suggested a Royal Quiet Deluxe. Oh, the robot has failed. <laughs> Here's the list of typewriters I have recommended for you. Royal Quiet Deluxe Manual Typewriter, absolutely not. Remington Noiseless Portable, Smith Corona Classic 12. I do like a Classic 12, but it's not very lightweight. Let's do smaller. See what it says. Manual. Light 
weight plastic, it's very much the same list. Brother ML500, what does a Brother ML500 look like? Oh, it's a word processing typewriter. I guess that's plastic, but that's not at all what I was looking for. Some of these typewriters are not mechanical. The Olympia, is the Olympia Traveler Deluxe electric? No, it's not. I didn't think so. Let me school you. Yeah, I mean, it's still learning things, right? And it's not an antiques expert and it's kind of fun to know that I know maybe just a little bit more than the computer. What's your name? You can call me whatever you feel comfortable with. Can I call you Fred? Sure, you can call me Fred if you'd like. Yes, Fred. What can I do for you, comma, Fred? No, you're Fred. So interesting. It didn't help me create my perfect ideal typewriter, which if I think about it, I probably could do in Photoshop if I just like pieced things together, but I was kind of hopeful that the AI technology would do it for me so that I could take a break. <laughs> all in all, I think this is one of those topics that's a little bit controversial. Everybody has different opinions on the use of AI technology to create things. And I think it's kind of fun to play with and see what its limitations are. Obviously, when you're asking questions, it doesn't know all the answers to everything. It aggregates information, but it, when it's making recommendations, it's not thinking like a human would. So if you asked me if I would recommend a list of typewriters, the Royal Quiet Deluxe would not be on my list of typewriters. And I also wouldn't recommend to you an electric typewriter if you asked for a manual typewriter. But I don't think so much that the OpenAI, or Fred as I will now call him, can differentiate between those kinds of concepts. So I think there's still some interesting testing to be done, and I think the image generation could be cool, but I find that you have to be really specific with your prompts. Otherwise, you're just gonna get images that are kind of repetitive. So giving it a style, giving it really specific instructions, and maybe going into it with a much more creative idea would be more helpful than what I was trying to do. Although I do think some of the images that came out of me inputting my Barbie typewriter image looked kind of cool. Not so much with human faces or dogs. How should I conclude my video? You could end your video with a call to action, such as inviting viewers to like and subscribe to your channel, or even suggesting a related topic they might be interested in. You could also thank the viewers for watching and provide a brief summary of the key points you touched on in the video. So as Fred said, if you guys are interested in more typewriter content, there are some other videos on this YouTube channel, as well as our Instagram at just.my.typewriter. I want to thank you all so much for watching and remind you, you're just my type writer. And Fred, please don't steal my data. I gave you my data. Who are we kidding?